Okay, now comes what I think is the most artistic and fun part of this project, and that's embroidering the picture on the back of the hand. In your kit, you'll have two little bobbins of colored yarn. One will be for the branch, and one will be for the bird. Your colors may be different than mine, so you pick which, uh, whichever color looks like a branch color. Might be green, might be a different shade of brown or black, and which color is for the bird. If you um, if you want to use different colors from you know your stash of yarn, we're basically just using a fingering weight yarn for this um, embroidery project. So you might have something else that you'd like to use. We're doing an embroidery known as duplicate stitch and duplicate stitch is a technique for tracing over top of a knit stitch. Um, this pattern that we're looking at has 27 stitches. If you look at your chart you'll see it's 27 stitches wide and it's about uh, what have we got here? 30 rows tall. So I like to start close to the bottom of the mitten and I like to start with the branch or whatever section of the pattern is closest to the bottom. So that's the branch in this one. So I'm going to start my pattern really close to the thumb here. If I were working on this side of the mitten I would um, start my branch way over here but I'm going to start my first one here by the thumb um, and so here we go. To do duplicate stitch, um, you basically need to trace over a stitch. So I'm going to insert my needle over here somewhere. It doesn't really matter where. I just want it to be out of the way of my... Um, I want the yarn tail that I'm going to draw through to be out of, the, out of my way so I don't um, sew over top of it. And I'm bringing my needle through the base of a stitch. So this is the stitch right here that I'm going to duplicate or cover over. So I'm going to bring my needle in right at the bottom of that stitch. So I, I poke it in way over here and I bring it up so that it's at the base of that stitch. I'm going to draw my yarn through and I'm going to insert my needle into the two bars of the stitch above the one that I want to duplicate. Draw the yarn through there and then go right back down into the same hole. Let me just pull that through so I can show you what it looks like and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so it's very tiny here but you can see that I've created a V in my work and that's sitting on top of the stitch underneath it. Okay. Let me, let me get my yarn back on my needle again and I'll show you the next step. So I'm uh, doing the chart down here and I've done this stitch right here and now I'm going to do these two stitches next to it and then come up and do the next few stitches. So I'll re-thread my needle here and to duplicate the next stitch I'm going to bring my needle up into the space below the stitch that I want to cover. So that's this one right here. And then I'm going to put my needle sideways through the two bars of the stitch above the one that I want to duplicate. Getting trapped on the side of my mat here. And this time, instead of taking my yarn um, through to the back, I'm going to insert it into the base of the stitch and bring it immediately over into the base of the next stitch because I need to have three stitches side by side. So there's one and two, and my yarn is in the base of the third stitch. And now I'm going to pull it through the arms of the stitch above it. Okay, and then I'm going to put my needle right back down in this space again to create the three stitches side by side. Now, my next 
um, stitch on the chart is right above this one. So to do that, I insert my needle and bring it right up in the middle of that stitch, which is also the base of the stitch on the row above. Okay, so there's one, two, three, and now my yarn is coming out of the base of the stitch above. I'll put my needle in to the arms of the stitch above that one. And then for this particular pattern, I'm just going to go over one stitch. And now I have a line of stitches. I'm going to go across here for, let's see, six stitches. So there's two. three, I'm just adjusting the tension. When I pull the yarn through, I'm not pulling tightly. I want to make the stitch, my, I want to make my embroidered stitch about the same um, width as the stitch underneath it. Let's see how many I've got here now. If I pull too tightly, I can just loosen up a bit. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. Here's the sixth stitch in this level of my branch. And again, I'm going up one one row. So I'm going to put my needle in at the base of the stitch and then just pop it right up into the space above it. There we go. And now I'm going to start my next row. So duplicate stitch isn't terribly difficult, but it does have a few rules that are good to follow. Because I'm right-handed, I like to work from the right to the left, but if you were left-handed, you could work from the left to the right. In fact, if I'm doing a row, if I'm doing um, filling in a space, I may work from the right to the left and then from the left to the right, and back from the right to the left, and to the left to the right. But I always try to cover the stitch in the same way. So you can see I've come in from the base of the stitch, and again, because I'm right-handed, I'm going from the right to the left through the stitch above me. If you went from the left to the right, that's fine. You just want to be consistent as you go across your, your row. Do you see how that's filling in my branch? And it looks like it's been knitted right in. But the advantage of doing it this way is that you don't have to worry about any kind of gauge issues that you might have from doing a stranded color work approach to this. And of course, you could use a bit of graph paper to come up with your own picture or put your initials on it or anything else that you like. All right, so here's a section where I need to come back across the top. So according to my chart, I've got another row of brown stitches across here. So I'm just going to um, do the same thing, except I'm going to work from the left to the right to go back. And so I just want to show you that even though I'm working in the opposite direction, I'm still entering the stitch the same way. So because I started with my yarn coming through the strand here above from the right to the left. I'm going to continue doing that. Now I'm going to angle my needle over this way so that I'm, it's coming out right above the stitch from the row below. Okay, so it's at the base of the stitch and again 
I'm going from the right to the left. If I um, find that I pulled a little too hard on my yarn, you can just loosen it up a little bit as you go. So again, from, from me, from the right to the left, through the stitch above, even though I'm working, and in this case, from the left to the right. But if you did need to back up um, and remove any of these stitches because you got off track, um, the easiest way to do that is not to try to unsew it, but to um, unthread your needle and use the needle to pull on a visible strand and back up in that manner. Okay, if you try to you take your threaded needle and put it back through the um, undo the stitch, you generally end up catching your yarn on um, on a strand and getting it kind of embedded in your project. So just use the tip of your needle to pull out the strands and remove your embroidery so you can try it again. Okay, so that's the basic um, that's the basic instruction for doing duplicate stitch. Uh, follow the chart from the bottom up, um, working your stitches. I'm going to finish this branch and then come back and start the bird. All right, so I've got my bottom branch done. I think I have to do a few more stitches up here in brown, but I can start my bird now. So I'm going to give myself a length of my bird colored yarn. You might be wondering how much yarn should you put on your needle and there's no real um, hard and fast answer to that. Uh, I usually cut off about a meter of yarn at a time. Okay, I'm going to do my bird next and the bird is sitting on the branch right about here. So again, I'm going to work um, from the bottom up and I'm going to put my first stitch right here. So. I always bring in my yarn from the side. Just find that it helps to keep it kind of off to the side and out of the way. Keep tails out of the way. I'm going to like to stick my hand inside my project so that I don't accidentally sew the two sides together. I'm skipping a stitch because the bird's feet are one stitch apart. So there's one. Oops. Sorry about that, everybody. There's my two bird feet, and now I'm looking for where my next stitch is. So my next stitch is going to go right here. So I'm going to just put my, always pop your needle up in the base of the stitch you're about to cover if you can. I've done a little more work on my bird and I'm ready to start the second branch. And I wanted to show you another little trick that's kind of good for doing duplicate stitch like this. Um, I could start my other branch over here or I could start it over here, but I find actually that now that I've got some of the graphic done on my picture, now's a good time to actually start in the center. So my branch begins um, about, I can see on my chart that I've got three blank spaces above the um, top of the head of the bird and above, centered above the eye. So if I leave three spaces here, I can take my yarn and again, coming in from the side, I can bring it into the base of the stitch that is three stitches above the head of my bird. I'm going to make sure I'm not caught on anything um, under, in between my gloves. So I'm just going to pull my yarn through like this. But this time I'm going to leave a very long tail because I'm going to work this half of the branch and then I'm going to come back and use this long tail that I've got over here to finish off this half of the branch. So I'm starting in the center. And the reason I'm doing this is just because it's a good place to begin 
um, it's a good place to see where I'm beginning and I don't have to count too many stitches um, to, to be able to work uh, where I want to work. So that's that's why I'm starting here. So I'll, I'll work on this half of the branch and then I'll come back in the video and show you how I release this yarn and use it up here. Here's another little spot that um, sometimes can cause some issues. So I'm going down instead of up. Um, so I'm going to insert my needle into the base of this stitch. This is the one that I'm covering right here. And I'm going to uh, duplicate the stitch right below it. So what I do is I bring my needle, just get this out of the way here. So I bring my needle down into the space where to complete the stitch. And then I go down into the stitch below it. See that? So now my stitch is now in the base of the um, knitted stitch right below the one I just duplicated. And this time I'm going to go up through the arms of the stitch above, but I'm not going to go through the white yarn. I'm just going to go through the brown yarn because trying to get under both layers is a little bit thick. So I'm going to just go under the brown yarn and then come back here and angle over one stitch for my next one. All right. So if you do end up duplicating a stitch underneath one, then you can, instead of going deep down under both layers, just go underneath the two bars of the stitch that is on top of your work. As you can see, I finished the left, left side of the branch uh, from my bird, and now I'm going to work on the right side. So here's the other half of my yarn that I left in this middle position. So I'm going to turn my turn your mitten slightly inside out. Thread your needle. Look at where you are in your chart. <laughs> that always helps. And now I'm going to bring my yarn up, let's see, right here. There we go and carry on with my pattern in the other direction. So the idea here is that you don't have to start at one end of your embroidery. You can start in the middle and you can work in both directions. And the nice thing about this is that if I had started here and worked my way along and run out of yarn here, and started a new piece, because I'm using a variegated yarn, it might not continue with the same color sequence that I have here. So a nice thing about doing this is that you can um, carry on and still have the same kind of color going off on this direction. All right, I'll keep working. You too. Here's another little interesting thing that can happen when you're doing this type of embroidery. So I've finished a section of four stitches and my next section is starting back here and I'm going to cover over here. So um, can you, you know, can you move your needle further than just one stitch away? The answer is yes, you can. So I'm going to take my needle and put it here in the base of this stitch to finish off my knit stitch here and I'm going to angle it over and bring it up in the base of the stitch two stitches over. There we go and then I'll carry on along across the top here. Now if I had to carry that yarn for a greater distance than just a couple of stitches um, I might have to turn my glove inside out and just uh, pick up some stitches along the inside to carry it to the point where I need it next. When I finished with my branch here, uh, according to the chart, I just tucked the yarn and brought it off to the side here. Once I'm done with my bird over here, I may decide that I'd like to have a little more branch, maybe thicken things up a little bit, maybe even add a branch in. So I'm not going to deal with these tails until I'm done all of my embroidery and then I may weave them in in the back or um, use them for a little more embellishment. Here's a section where I've 
um, been embroidering down here and now I need to get my yarn back up here. So my next stitch that I want to do is right in this space here. Uh, it's probably not too far for me to strand across the back to connect back up to the stitch but just in case you end up in a situation where you've got a little ways to go I'll just show you what to do in that circumstance. So uh, take your yarn and pop it into the center so we're finishing off I'm finishing off this stitch right here and I need to go kind of kitty corner up to here. Turn your turn your project uh, inside out and just take your needle and insert it under the purl bump of a stitch and just gently bring it back up to where you might need it, closer to the point where you're going to need it. Um, you want to make sure that you're not pulling too tightly on this strand so that you don't end up with any puckering on the inside. But that's simply all you need to do is turn your, turn your project inside out and uh, strand your yarn across the back of your stitches to get it back to the point where you want it to be. And then with your needle just thread it into the stitch that you're going to duplicate and keep going. Alright, so when you are done you can take your wool needle and your little bits of yarn and you can just tuck them in to secure them in the back of your work. They're not likely to come undone, maybe the last stitch could come undone, so um, in terms of tucking them in, you don't have to tuck them in too far. Just enough to keep it from being a nuisance on the inside and to keep it from coming out on the outside. There's a little tail here that I decided to use up, so I'm going to um, make sure I tuck it in a little more carefully because I don't want it to come undone or pop out onto the other side of my work. There we go. There, finish up your mittens and enjoy the fruits of your labor.